Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today we're going to be going through type 6 trick questions, which are solving equations, and we're going to be specifically focusing on solving equations with general solutions. So this would be applicable if you're in grade 11 or 12. So in a type 6 question, you'll be asked to solve for the value of an unknown angle, and typically the instruction you'll be given is to solve or determine the value of this unknown angle. So in grade 11 and 12, this is one of the most complex type of trig questions. And this is because your angle isn't confined to the first quadrant anymore like it was in grade 10. Your angle could be in quadrant 2, 3, or 4. And what you also have to do is find a general solution. So we'll see what that means in a little bit. So an example of a type of question you could be getting is solve for theta. So in this case, that would be the unknown angle you've been asked to find. And you have your equation minus 3 sine theta equals 2 and you have to find the value of theta over here. So I've been speaking about general solutions. And what exactly is a general solution? So remember previously I mentioned that if you wanted to convert a negative angle in trig to its positive twin, all you had to do was say 360 degrees plus the negative, right? So if you had sine negative 30 degrees, you could convert it into a positive angle by saying sine negative 30 plus 360, and that would give you sine 330 degrees. And why did I say this? Well, basically, trig functions repeat every 360 degrees. So imagine we had a triangle over here. We had an angle here, 30 degrees, and we had our coordinate there, root 3 and 1. If you did Pythagoras, then your radius would be 2, okay? And now, let's say we wanted to find the value of sine 30 degrees, okay? We'd have sine 30 equals y over r. And in this case, our y value is 1, and our r value is 2. So we have sine 30 being equal to half. But what if we added 360 degrees to this 30 degrees? Well, basically, we'd come full circle, we'd come right around, and we'd be back at this line here. So our coordinates for 390 degrees, which is 30 plus 360, would be the same. So if we wanted to find the value of sine 390 degrees, we'd say that's y over r. And in this case, because we're back at the same line here, our y and r value is the same. So that's still going to be half. So you can see the value of sine 30 and uh, sine 390 is the same. So in a question, if you were told that sine theta equals a half, your value for theta could be 30 degrees or it could be 390 degrees. And you could even add 360 to that 390 and make that into 750 degrees. So you can see we can go around an infinite number of times and still get an angle which would which if you put it into sine, the sine of that angle would still be equal to half. And once we go through trig graphs, you'll see why this is true, because of they keep repeating. It keeps going up and down. That sine wave keeps repeating itself. So, so this is why we need a general solution. Because if you wanted to find the value of theta here, you could have an infinite number of solutions. So we need, need a way to express that. However, just remember that tan repeats itself every 180 degrees as opposed to sine and cos, which repeat themselves every 360 degrees. In grade 11 and 12, we'll be working in quadrants 2, 3, and 4, and not just quadrant 1, as you did in grade 10. So the angle you'll be solving for could be in any of these quadrants. Now, what does this mean? Well, we know that sine 30 degrees is equal to half, right? But we also know from our secondary special angles that sine 150 degrees is also equal to positive half if you use your supplementary reduction formula. So if you were given something like this, sine theta equals half, and you were asked to find the value of theta, your angle could be 30 degrees or it could be 150 degrees. And obviously to each of these, you could add 360 um, an infinite number of times. So how does this affect our approach to solving the question? 
Well, we know our reduction formula. In the second quadrant, we have 180 minus theta. Third quadrant is 180 plus theta. And the fourth quadrant is 360 minus theta. So this is going to affect how we set our key angle equal to our argument. So I'm just going to pull up our conversions here. When you're solving a type six question, depending on the quadrant you're working in, you're going to be using a different conversion. So your key angle is the angle you find when you solve um, using your calculator for whatever's on the right-hand side. So if you had sine theta equals half, if you punched in sine the inverse of half on your calculator, you'd get 30 degrees. And then you'd set this value equal to the argument. So your argument in this case is theta. You'd say theta equals your key angle, 30 degrees was what we found from our calculator. And you'd say that's plus K360 degrees, K element of Z. And now why are we saying this K360? Well, remember we said that the trig function repeats itself every 360 degrees. So this K over here is standing for an integer. So it could be minus one, one, two, and so on. And if you multiply two, let's say to 360, you get 720. So that value, 720 plus 30 is 750. And if you take sine of 750, it's still going to give you your half. So this K360 allows us to find a general solution for our angle. It's basically a machine we can use to find all the values of theta that would make sine theta equal to half. And for all our other quadrants, we also have conversions. And we'll go through these with an example. So our method for solving a type six question in grade 11 and 12 is going to start with the same step as in grade 10. We're going to get the trig function in the form trig function equals number. Then step two, is going to be to ignore the sign on the right hand side. So you, if you had sine theta equals negative a half, you'd ignore that negative a half when you using your calculator to find your key angle. So in your calculator, you'd say sine inverse half. You wouldn't use the negative. You wouldn't put a negative there. You just find positive half the sine inverse of that. And that's going to become your key angle. And then from there, you're going to determine your appropriate quadrant by looking at the sign on the right hand side in conjunction with the cast rule. So now you'd say, okay, I have the negative half here. I know sine is positive in one and two because of the cast rule. So I must be working with quadrants three and four. And then from there, you'd set your arguments equal to your key angles using the conversions. So you'd know you'd be using quadrant three and quadrant four because you found out that because your trig function was negative, you're working in quadrant three and four. And from your calculator, you have sine inverse half is 30 degrees. So you'd say your argument in this case was theta is equal to 180 plus your key angle, which was 30 degrees plus a 360 k element of Z. And you always write that k element of Z. It means k is an integer. It's an element of the integers. So it can't be 1.5 because that would mean you're instead of multiplying by 360, you're going to be multiplying by you're going to be adding rather 540 degrees, which is one and a half revolutions instead of um, a complete revolution, which wouldn't make your angle um, when you put it in that trig function equal to what you found. So it wouldn't be equal to half. So just to consolidate the method, let's go and do an example. So in this example, we are given, we are told to determine the value of theta and we have negative three sine theta equals two. So theta is our unknown here. So step one, get into the form trig function equals number. I'll divide throughout by negative three. So I'll get sine theta equals negative two over three. Now I'm going to ignore the sign on the right hand side. So I'm going to ignore that negative and I'm going to get out my calculator. I have my calculator here. I made sure it's in degrees. I can see my D at the top there. And I'm going to find the inverse of two over three. So I'm going to say shift sign two over three and I'm ignoring my negative here. So I'll close my brackets and that's going to be equal to 48.81 degrees. So I'll write down on my page that my key angle is 41.81 
degrees. Now I'll go on to step three, which is to determine the appropriate quadrants I'm working with by looking at the sign on the right-hand side. So in this case, we have a negative here, and where is sign negative? Well, we know due to the class rule, sign is positive in quadrants one and quadrants two, so it must be negative in quadrant three and four. So we must be working with the third and fourth quadrant. So we'll get out our conversions for each quadrant. We know in quadrant three, that's going to be 180 plus theta. And in quadrant four, we're going to be working with 360 minus theta. So we'll set our argument equal to our key angle in terms of these conversions. So for quadrant three, our argument in this case is theta. We have a very simple argument over there. We're going to say that's equal to 180 degrees from there plus our key angle theta. So that's going to be 41.81 degrees plus K360 degrees, K element of Z. And that's going to be 221.81 degrees plus K360 degrees, K element of Z. And now we can do the same for quadrant four. We have theta equals, that's our argument. We'll set our argument equal to 360 minus our key angle. 41.81 degrees plus K360 degrees, K element of Z. So that's going to give us an answer of theta being equal to 318.19 degrees plus K360 degrees, K element of Z. And now if you wanted to check if your answer was correct or not, you could just put these back in your calculator and see if you got negative two over three when, when you put that into your calculator. So let's go and try that. So I have my calculator up here, and what we'll go ahead and do is test our answer. So I like testing my answer using the original equation. So that would be negative three sine theta. So I'll put in my calculator negative three sine, and now for my angle, I'll put in my answers. So we'll try our first one, 221.81. And we'll see if that gives us two. If it gives us two, we know we're right. So that's going to give us 1.99998, which is approximately two. It's not exactly two because we've rounded our final answers to two decimal places. So I'm pretty confident that our answer was correct for 221.81 degrees. Let's go ahead and try the same for 318.19 degrees. So we'll put 318. 1, 9, and that gives us an answer of 1.9998, which is approximately 2. So we can be pretty confident that the answers we've given are correct. And if you even wanted to test your general solution, you could go in here and add 360 and see if that gave you the same answer as well. That also comes out as 1.99998, which is approximately 2. So we're pretty confident that our answer is correct. So let's go ahead and try one last example. We are told to solve for x in the domain. x is an element of minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. So what does this mean? Well, this means we've been asked to solve for all values of x that lie between minus 360 degrees and 360 degrees, which prove true for the following equation. So some of you might be more familiar with this notation. Okay, we are told that x lies between minus 360 and 360. And it could also be equal to these because we have square brackets. So our steps for solving this question are going to be the same as before. So we have 2 cos x equals 1. We'll get in the form trig function equals number. That's going to be cos x equals a half. We'll ignore the sign on the right hand side. And if you know your special angles, you'll know that the cos inverse of half is 60 degrees. So your key angle in this case is going to be 60 degrees. And obviously you could try this on your calculator, but your special angles are something you should know. And now we'll look at the sign on the right hand side to determine our appropriate quadrants. So we are told that cos x equals positive a half. And we know that cos is positive in quadrants one and four because of the cost rule. So we'll set our argument, which is x in this case, equal to our key angle and any appropriate conversions. So for the first quadrant, that's quite simple. 
we have x, which is our argument, equal to 60 degrees, our key angle, plus k360 degrees, k element of z. That's for the first quadrant. Now, for the fourth quadrant, we're going to have to use our conversion. For the fourth quadrant, we have our argument, x. It's going to be equal to, now in quadrant four, our conversion is going to be 360 minus theta. It's 360 pull backwards. So that's going to be 360 minus our key angle, which is in this case 60 degrees, plus a360 degrees, a element of z. So that then becomes 300 degrees plus a360, a element of z. So we have our two general formulae over here. Our first one is that x equals 60 degrees plus a360. Okay. And our second one is that x equals 300 degrees plus a360. So now we've been asked to find for x in this domain. So we have our general solutions, but we also need to find all the values of x in that domain that prove true for this equation. So what we'll go and do is substitute a few k values into each of these equations. So we'll try 1, 2, 3, and maybe minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3 to see if we get any x values that are within that domain. So for our first equation, this one here, we'll try k is equal to 1, okay? So we have x equals 60 degrees plus 360 degrees, which gives us 420 degrees. But 420 is outside our domain. It's greater than 360 degrees. So that's not going to work. So we can get rid of that over there and try another integer. Obviously, if we try k is equal to 0, we're going to get x is equal to 60 degrees. And that's a possible solution. So I'll put our possible solutions down here. 60 degrees is going to work if k is 0. Because and 60 is part of our domain, it's between minus 360 and 360. How about if k was negative 1? So that's going to be 60 minus 360 degrees, which gives us minus 300 degrees. And that is in our domain. 300 is between minus 360 and 360. So one of our other solutions would be minus 300 degrees. And now if I look at my second equation, Obviously, if I had k equals 0, I'd get an answer of 300 degrees, which is in our domain. However, if I tried, let's say k is equal to 1, I'm obviously going to exceed my domain. So let's try k is equal to negative 1 for equation 2. That's going to be 300 minus 360 degrees. And that's going to give me an answer of negative 60 degrees. So these are our four solutions. In the, in the domain we were asked to solve in for this equation. And if you wanted to check your, all your answers, you could get out your calculator and then input all these solutions into our original equation. So I'll put our original equation here, which is 2 cos, and now we'll try each of the solutions. So cos 60 gives us 1, so that's correct. If we go back, we can try minus 300 minus 300. That also gives us 1, so that's correct. We can try positive 300. That gives us 1, so that's also correct. And minus 60 degrees. That also gives us 1. So you can see our four solutions are correct, and we've checked that they are correct. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this explains how to do general solutions and how to solve trig equations quite well. Thanks for watching. Thank you.